Hello, this is Uncle Jim. I did this video the other day on the Rock Island Armory 10 millimeter 1911 extractor, which is totally weird. It is not like any other 1911 extractor I've seen before. So I forgot to take it out and run a Q-tip down there and inspect it. I did do the firing pin spring and that was awesome. It was heavy duty and it'll pass any drop test and it's time for the recoil spring. Anyway, this is what a regular 1911 extractor in 40 or 10 millimeter should look like, other than the cut for a Series 80 in the back. So you'll notice there's no bump up front, and it only has one bump in the back. Now, somebody, this is all factory, somebody had shaped for carrying up the brass. They put a 45 degree angle on the flat and the corner of the tooth. However, they must have used a farrier rasp for making horseshoes because it has so many scratches in it. And then on the back side here, they beveled it to make it go in and out easier like some 1911 extractors, but they took way too much off. You only gotta break the edge. So this is the funkiest extractor I've ever seen. So I had two malfunctions out of three mags uh, with the gun brand new. And since I finally took it out and looked at it, look at that. Mm. I decided we're going to fix it today and I'm going to narrate it tonight so I don't throw away the video because I spent the time doing it in the first place. So let's try and make this right. Anyway, uh... The rear end clocks in nice with the plate, so that's good. You want a tight fit where it doesn't move side to side. And they made a huge 45 degree angle on it, so I'm going to fix it the best I can. Usually you round that over. So I'm going to use the end of the table here, and you'll notice all the, the beat up looks on the end of the table. If you wonder why the end of my uh, desk looks screwed up, it's now you know. So I'm using a fine file here with no serrations on the edges. All I'm doing is the flat. So we're only going to work on the flat and round that over. And they've already cut too much, but I'm going to try and round it over. But you can see my table. Now you know. All right. This is where stuff is fixed. <laughs> I'm on the couch, by the way, it's past midnight, and it's hot with the fans rolling, so I hope the sound's okay. So I'm going to use a rolling motion with my left hand, and we're going to roll it as we file it and try and round over the edge like it should be, instead of a wicked 45 angle. Now, I can't take all those serrations off from whatever file they used, for making horseshoes, but we're gonna do the best we can. And so you're just turning it with one hand and rounding over like this, that kind of motion. I don't know what's coming next on the video because I'm narrating something that happened before. Okay, so I'm gonna use a ceramic stone to give it a final polish, and I'm just gonna go straight to the extra fine. This is what I usually use on trigger jobs. Ceramic stones are the best for that. They're accurate. They're square. Uh, that was a ceramic, uh, uh, our Kansas stone in the middle. There's a ceramic in a dark color, and you can get them in all grits. I'm just going to go for the extra fine, uh, which I use for finishing off trigger jobs. Now, since they buggered it up, um, we're just going to round that edge over. And then I found a burr on the inside, so we're going to have to fix that with a different file. And this is going to make it way better, and I doubt I'll have another nose up ever again. So a few passes with the file, rounding it over, it looks like that. And it's not so much like someone's building a house with a 45-degree angle. Okay, so... Now I'm going to polish it off with a ceramic stone, extra fine. 
and you don't want to use a Dremel or anything because these are critical parts and you don't want to hit the hook itself. I might give that a few passes, but that's it. At the same time, I got to fix that 45 degree angle where the uh, rim comes up on the extractor. And so I'm going to roll it and fix that angle at the same time and then just go for the edge. And then it turns out I had to use a file anyway to get rid of a burr they left because they used a sharp edge file when they did everything at once. So on a ceramic stone, you use water, not oil. So uh, I'm going to water the stone and try and clean it up and polish it with an extra fine stone, which is normally used for trigger jobs. Okay, so anyway, it's really hot out. My head was hot, and I'm laying on the couch, and you can probably hear fans in the background, but I just want to get this video out of my hair because I don't want to throw it away. Might as well show you. So we're going to do a rolling motion, and I'm going to clean up that 45 on the underhook and the 45 on the flat on the side of the extractor at the same time and just try and polish that up. You don't want to use a Dremel polishing tool because they're critical parts and Dremels have ruined more guns than anything else. <laughs> and this is easy. It only takes a few minutes and we're done. All right. Okay, that is with a few passes. I, I can't get rid of the scratches laid laid in that thing, and I don't want to remove all that material. But since it's carrying up the same direction, it's not going to be a big deal. Now I found a burr in the corner because they used a sharp edge file like this when they did it. And you don't want that. That'll collect dirt, and it also left a burr. So i got to take that burr off and round it over. At the same time, i got to give it a few swipes on the 45 edge and get rid of that burr. So another job delay. All right, back to the super fine stone, and we're going to roll it on the table. Just a rolling motion with both hands, and it's much easier doing it this way than trying to put it in a vise and... Everything is done by feel. That's how the old school gunsmith always did it. Okay, they could feel everything with their two hands, and it's the perfect way to go. And now you know why the edge of my desk is all marred up, if you've seen my videos. <laughs> Not just for this, but other things. All right, now we're getting better, and I think we're not going to have any issues. Now, the extractor was extremely hard getting out because it has no bump on the end to fit the channel. So you had to push it in and out at the same time with a brass punch, and it's a pain in the butt. It's unlike any 1911 extractor I've ever seen. This is probably their thing only. The good news is the rear locks up really nice. It's super tight. And then we're going to put the firing pin plate in there without the firing pin. And we're going to check it. And we're also going to check for clocking. Uh, one thing that can happen on 1911s is if you have a loose plate to extract your fit, you can get clocking that's right and left. And then your extractor is kind of rolling, and it's not the same every time. And that can cause you some head scratches if you think you got everything right. In this case, it is perfectly tight. It fit beautifully in the rear. We just had a guy from Friday that was doing horseshoes or something. I don't know. So now we're going to check an empty brass. i got to clean it out. Okay. And we're going to see the tension was good in the first place, right out of the box. So I didn't mess with the tension. That's easy to do using the back of your slide as, as a tool. And we want a light tension that holds the round, but not too tight to impede feeding. 
and that is the same. The only thing I notice is we don't have that burr and we have a rounded over edge. So I can whop that thing out, yet it's not too loose and not too tight. You don't want it wobbly. So now we'll do a dummy round with a heavy bullet in there and make sure it doesn't just wobble and fall out on its own and everything slides up nice. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I'm on the couch half naked with the fans going, editing this video so it's out of my hair. Until next time, thanks for watching.